I've always wanted to learn how to TIG weld titanium really bad, but I've never really had the chance to learn it yet until now. So right now, let's see if I can do it without making a mess. My name is Dusty and I've been TIG welding in the industry for almost 20 years now. My YouTube channel is for the positive people in the welding community who love TIG welding as much as I do. So join me on my mission on my channel and let's get welding. This is Pacific Arc TIG welding. Hello Arc heads, welcome to another episode. I've had the pleasure of doing a bunch of different types of TIG welding over the span of the last 20 years or so. I've had the opportunity to tack a few titanium parts together, but overall I've never really had a go with any extensive welding with it. But I got hit up a few weeks ago by a company called Panda Fab, and get this, they offered to send me a whole box of titanium parts so I could finally have access to some so I can learn a little bit more about it and the different types of ways that we can get going learning how to weld on it. So today I am stoked. I've done some super extensive research on how to learn how to weld titanium. Hey Jody here, this video is about TIG welding titanium. And after my extensive research on it, I am ready to give it a go. I think it's gonna be fun. As of right now, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. But by the end of this video, let's see if I can figure it out. So for settings, we're gonna be running on DC negative. It's the same setting you'll be using to weld stainless steel or mild steel. I'm gonna program the machine for a pretty low amperage. I have it set for about 60 amps. I'm not even gonna come close to using 60 amps. I will dictate how much of that amperage I use with my foot pedal. I will be using pure argon and I will set it up to be running somewhere about 30 to 40 CFH. Now the biggest difference to our setup that we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to run way more post flow than usual. So not only are we running more volume of gas through our working pressure on our regulator, we are gonna be setting our post flow for approximately 15 seconds. Now, for my torch setup, we're gonna to have to set up a little differently for my torch. I always use edge welding cups on my torches. They're pretty dope cups. But for what we're gonna to do today, I'm gonna to be running more volume of gas through my regulator, so we need to use a bigger cup. Today, I'm gonna to use a, what number is this? 15? Yeah, it's 15. It is a number 15 cup. This one is gonna barf out tons of gas onto our weld area. So anywhere between 30 to 40 CFH of argon coming through a number 15 cup is gonna give us a lot of coverage. It's worth it for today, it's gonna be fun. So for the material I'm gonna start off with practicing on. These are just titanium coupons. They are 1.6 millimeters thick. Let me see here. Oh, they're even thinner, one millimeter. It's 039, we got a couple 10 packs of this stuff here. And before we get going, we're gonna give this plate a quick wipe down with acetone and we're ready to go. Okay, so hands down, the first thing I notice is how much my rod is sticking to everything. It is super, super annoying. You have to take meticulous detail to make sure that you put the filler rod in at exactly the right spot on the leading edge of the puddle. If you put it too close, to the front edge of the puddle, it's going to stick to the base material. It's really freaking annoying. Basically being as delicate as you can, the lightest dabs is probably the way to go with this. You can get adequate filler into the joint and having lighter dabs will prevent you from sticking to the plate. And again, as we finish up here, a ton of post flow. I'm just letting this thing run as long as it wants and I'm actually giving it an extra tap with the foot pedal to reset the timer for another 15 seconds of post flow. Another view here as I come towards the end. This is after a few passes, so the plate is pretty hot by this point. But again, we're keeping control of the width. And again, I'm gonna post flow the absolute living heck out of this thing. All right, gonna try a lap weld here. Look at how much the rod is sticking. Jeez, this is so annoying. Just when you think you're good to go, the rod gets stuck and you cannot get it out. But we restart and eventually we're off and running. Kinda got the feel for it now. This is a ton of fun. Being able to play with this for the first time is a feeling that I haven't had with welding in quite a long time. Trying something that's new, it's a little bit confusing at first and figuring it out, for the most part, trying to make it look okay is a ton of fun. This is one of the joys of welding. Again, we're keeping the filler rod in as close as possible. We're not letting the filler rod leave the gas envelope either. Now this one here, I have an overhand position so I can actually see a lot better and it's a lot easier to film. I don't have the camera right in my face. But this one actually went a lot better. I have easier time feeding the filler rod into the sweet spot. This one turned out much nicer. When I finish this one, it looks much better than some of the other ones. All right, so I just got an idea. Who's ever seen the stuff online where people color up the titanium before they weld it? Normally it's done on pipe and stuff like that, but we could definitely try and do it here today. I've got a torch. Let's try and put some color on some of these plates and then we'll run a pass on it and take a look and see what it looks like after. 
Throwing these down over the oxide looks amazing. The idea of doing this over some pipe, or better yet, maybe even an art piece would be incredible. Now I got myself thinking of an art piece right now. Maybe something like that will be in the future. One thing I have seen is you can actually color up your welds with a flame after you've welded it. I can use the same flame I used to put color on the plate before I welded, but we'll do it after. We can actually put the same oxide over the clean welds that we've done and make them look super cool. What I would like to do is try and set up a butt joint. But unfortunately to do a butt joint, you need some kind of system to purge gas to the back side of the joint, which unfortunately, oh, actually, wait a second, hold up. Oh, um, no, I don't. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, no way I do. Oh, this is sweet, hold up. Dude, I totally forgot I had this. I have a Y fitting for my regulator. So this may not be the ideal setup for running two lines of argon, but it is something that's gonna work today. So let's hook this up. I can't believe I found this. So let's hook this up to the cylinder. Let's run a line for back purging and try some butt welds. Okay, I have a cheap little fixture here I just whipped up. This is not the fanciest thing by any means, but as you can see, I'm just using aluminum foil. I'm just making little dams at the end. Basically, all this is gonna do is just prevent most of the gas from escaping. Obviously, this is not going to form a proper seal, but just for doing a fun demo today, this is gonna work just fine. Now, as I start running this one, again, we gotta make sure that we keep tons of gas on this thing because it's an elevated surface now, it's gonna burn through much easier. So although we want a little bit of burn through, a little bit of penetration, we wanna make sure that we mitigate the overall heat input as best as I can. And then as I approach the tack at the end here, I'm gonna make sure that I maintain my heat to punch through to the other side properly. This was our butt weld. As you can see, we managed to keep it relatively clean. We got a good consistent profile, a decent amount of reinforcement on top. Everything stayed kind of proper colors for the most part. But for the moment of truth, look at the back side. This is insane. Obviously you can see we got through to the other side, but look at it, it's completely shiny. Obviously I could have done a better job with figuring out my gas on the back side. You can see it did keep some kind of proper color. As far as the actual weld area went, we got too much color on the heat affected zone around it. I'm very aware of that. But for playing around with it for the first time, it's kind of a sketchy setup. Gotta say I'm pretty impressed with this. All right, so another thing that they sent me is these titanium pie cuts for an exhaust run or something like that. They sent me some straight tube as well as these pie cuts. There's different kits for different sizes and thicknesses here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still practice, get ready to do this, maybe tack a couple up in preparation for the next episode where I do the titanium on pipe. But in the meantime, if you wanna get yourself some titanium from this company, go in the description below and check out the link that I've posted there. There is a discount code. You use the code PATW10. That is going to get you 15% off anything on their site. Get yourself some practice plates. This is an easy way to get into titanium without having to actually get into some really crazy stuff. If you had a bit of experience welding, get some pipe, practice, have some fun. This is a blast to play with. So check the description below, hit that link. It'll tell them I sent you. Get yourself 15% off. Go do it. So PandaFab, Thank you, you're awesome. I appreciate you reaching out to me. For all the arcades who watch the show every week, leave a dime in the comments below. I appreciate that as always. Go today, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty. Feeling chill, we'll talk soon. Peace.